being adherent to a gluten-free diet forever is really very, very difficult. Perhaps up to 50% or so can't do that. Interesting that women have almost twice the likelihood of being able to stay on a gluten-free diet than men. I'm a little, you know, <laughs> I'm a little partial to men, right? You know, I mean, my colleagues, but, uh, <clears throat> but the, the fact remains that, that women are more likely to follow it. But even there, there's a 30 or 40% dropout rate after time of, of uh, staying on a gluten-free diet. And so it's, number one, very difficult to stay on it. And even if you do stay on it, uh, and Kieran and, and Dan and others have done studies, it looks like uh, at least uh, about around 30% of people don't get better. And but no, not everyone's doing fine. And we've seen, you know, from studies out of the Mayo, from studies of our own, from some new studies coming out of the pediatric literature that, yeah, about 30% of patients with celiac disease, at least, and these are just the ones that come back to complain to us in clinic. And we know a lot of people just don't come back because really our, our ability to help them is so limited right now, um, have ongoing symptoms and are really not feeling well and, and feeling unwell enough that it really compromises their daily life. Something about the, the degree of sensitivity people can have to gluten. That makes it really outside of living on a bu in a bubble, impossible to be gluten-free enough to have full health. I think it starts right from kindergarten where this being different than others. But I think one of the things we've done so far since we don't have any medications is educate, and we educate the parents, uh, educate the children. It's tough. It's the constant vigilance that you hear, that ability to, that it's not, it, it can never really be a private disorder, the way diabetes, you can take your insulin in the, uh, you know, in the bathroom, you can take your heart disease medicine before you leave the house. Celiac disease comes with you wherever you go, and so it just sort of, and we see this all the time in the it, it grinds you down and it wears you down. So this under this sort of falsehood that celiac disease, the gluten-free diet is all you need, especially if you're feeling well, it's still all you need and everyone should be happy, um, is I think the next part of that story that really needs to be told so we can begin to better address the needs of this huge and growing population. I think previously uh, physicians were asked, is the gluten-free diet all you need for celiac disease? And the physicians answered, yes, it's wonderful. But when we began to ask, patients who were following the gluten-free diet, if it was okay, yes. then they would say, well, actually, I still have symptoms. Or actually, yeah, yeah, it works, but gee, it's so challenging to follow it all the time, which is, you know, the burden of disease that Dan was addressing. I think that was the sea change, that you stopped asking the experts was it enough, and you started asking the people who are self-treating all the time with it, is it enough? And they said, no, it actually like something more.